Welcome back to your build series. This is episode number 112. And so right here where we left off last time. So last time we took the amphibious truck and went out and rescued some people from a boat. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the amphibious truck. It's all fueled up here. And we're going to drive it back to Draymore. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to launch the Katie did. Katie did was the helicopter I used in the previous career build series. And it interacts well with Triton. It uh, is able to lock on to the helipad on Triton. And so then what I want to do is been doing some work and some live streams trying to get Triton ready for the career build series, trying to make sure everything's working. And I want to move Triton and get some containers. So let's go ahead and get started doing that. So I'll go ahead and jump in the back of the Amphib truck. So this uh, truck is working really well. I'm enjoying using it. It's nice to be able to do all sorts of missions with it. It'll be cool to get it down into the air biome, especially. Let's just go up the ladder and stop fooling around here. And, uh, you know, that has nice, long, straight roads. And we'll be able to go really hammer through there, go do some off-road. And so that'll be kind of fun to do that at some point. And we're already starting. Okay, let's see. Parking brake is released. Let's get out of here. All right, and so we'll go ahead and we'll drive back to Draymore. Shouldn't take too long. This thing's pretty fast, actually. A little bit overly fast. Not that we have any traffic. AI traffic would be kind of cool, but I could see people getting annoyed by it. And so we'll go ahead and we will uh, drive back to Draymore, uh, take Katie did, and we'll go land on our private island. At some point, I'd like to put a helipad on that island. It doesn't have it at present. Um, you see we're doing 90 uh, miles an hour here. And so the steering sensitivity needs to be turned down a little bit. It's too high right now. So it's uh, probably could use with just decrease the p-value a little bit. But a um, little bit touchy on steering. So what we'll do is we'll get the helicopter over there. I wish that that island would have the ability to spawn an air vehicle. It's kind of a pain because, you know, in order to use Triton, I have to spawn the vehicle separately and so to use the uh, the helicopters and so that will change the devs talked about in the uh, live stream about the new space DLC that they're going to change the way they do vehicles so that we won't have to worry about them just disappearing as one part of the vehicle gets too far away from the other they'll start to act like coherent independent parts and so that way we don't have to spawn them separately is my understanding who knows we'll see when we get it and so uh you know, that'll be kind of cool. So, like, right now I need to spawn the helicopter separate from the ship, or else once the helicopter goes two kilometers away from the ship, it has issues. So we'll go ahead and we'll make sure everything's working on both parts. So what I like to do is I'm trying to think what's going to be the best place to go to. The closest place is going to be to take Triton up to Spy Cakes and grab some containers from there. So I might do that. And then we'll go to Komodo, probably with some of them. Uh, Triton can handle five containers, uh, two double stacks and one single stack. So a good bit of container haulage there on Triton. Also can handle a submarine. I built a submarine last career build series. I'd like to get back into submarines, but I'm kind of waiting for the Space DLC. The Space DLC also is coming with the pressurization update. And so that will uh, give us some new and interesting things for submarines. I think that'll be a lot of fun, kind of learning that, doing some tutorials, and, uh, whoa, revamping the submarine. I did not see that uh, drop off there of the cliff. Wouldn't be the end of the world in this vehicle, but uh, still would rather not uh, not destroy ourselves if we can. This uh, vehicle is pretty resilient, pretty, uh, gets, it does pretty well on the bouncies. As one, oh, there's a bunny, don't hit the bunny. Do not hit the bunny rabbits. So it's a pretty resilient vehicle off-road, but you still have to be careful about slamming and things. There's a AI helicopter up there. And so we'll go ahead and we'll go down here to Draymore, grab Katie, and fly off to our island. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, we knew that was going to happen. All right, let's get out of here and fix this freaking problem we got here. I didn't set the brake. I don't know if the brakes work. I just don't want to get on fire. This was bound to happen. I don't think I have any sort of uh, repair tools in here. That is good to know because I need repair torches. 
That break is off, so we have to worry about this sucker rolling on top of us. Just trying to put the fire up for now. All right, so fire is out. I didn't get the message for the 2000 for putting the fire out. So instead of, we're going to have to run over here anyways to repair this. So instead of actually repairing it, I think what I'll do is I'll grab the Mac R Wrecker and we'll just tow it back. That was uh, <laughs> unintentional. You know, it's a big heavy vehicle and it has a lot of momentum and it wants to keep going in one direction and it did. So it handles off road pretty well, but again, it is still a big truck. It's not a sports car. You know, you get a big heavy car. They want, tend to want to go in a straight line. You get a nice little light car, you can change direction pretty quickly. But this is a big, heavy vehicle. So we're going to go ahead and grab that Macar Wrecker. We'll go ahead and drag this back. It's not very far. And then uh, we can launch the KDID. All right, here's the Macar Wrecker. Let's spawn it. All right, and let's fire up. still, as you can see from the side, I'm still uh, heated up from having the uh, having the truck on fire. But mercifully, we uh, did not get injured. And that, like I said, I forgot to put some uh, repair torches on there, so that would be something to add to the vehicle. So that will go in the old notes. And we'll go ahead and drag this sucker out of here, and ooh, let's find a path and not crash two vehicles, because I don't want to have to make a long... Uh, you know, Russian dolls of vehicles I have to tow back. The more I have, the more of a pain it's going to be to have to tow like 12 vehicles. So let's just work our way through this um, forest and uh, hook up. All right, we'll get. All right, so we'll go ahead and try to line up here. And we'll tow this sucker out of here. It's, it has kind of a high bumper, but it's not too bad. Some sort of animal squealing at me. I don't know where it could be. Do not know where it is. I can hear the squealing animal. I have no clue. All right, so we're currently under the bumper. That's fine. Go ahead and set the brake. Very interested where this animal is. Where are you at there, guy? There's an animal squeaking at us. I don't know where. All right, so let's see if I can remember how to run this. Those are toolboxes, so we could repair it, but um, I think not. I think what we'll do is uh, just tow it. So, let's see. Uh, it's moving on me. I have to get this attached here. Supports, winch, boom up, spots. We'll turn the lights on here. Ooh, that's bright. I think it's on the back, if I remember correctly. Yep, right there. Yep, that's it. So, we'll, we'll bump into this. I need to get it uh, raised, and then once it's aligned, we can uh, go ahead and... We can go ahead and hook up. All right, so let's uh, move us again. That animal is squeaking, squeaking, squeaking. I don't know where they are. I'm trying to hit this pretty square, but I don't think I'm going to, so here we go. I'm going to try to get that, um, that to attach, but we'll see. All right, let's set the brake, and we'll see what we can do. All right, let's raise this up further. I'm trying to see which one it is. Boom up. That's the one we want. Boom up. All right, good. Now it's attached. So we are hooked up here. All right, so let's go ahead. The brakes are already off on that, so we should be able to just tow. Still, I really don't want to run over this animal. I don't know where it is. There we go. So you can see the stability system is trying to uh, fix that, but it just can't do it. So this tow truck has zero problem towing this. This tow truck pretty much tows anything, so. Pretty pretty cake to get this thing moving. And we'll just bring this back, and we'll uh, continue on with the plans. We almost made it back a little bit of a uh, 
of a roadway departure, as it as it were. So, not too shabby, lava. Oh, I can hear the propeller going. <laughs> so it's still in gear, as you can see the wheel squealing. So just like in real life, if if it's still in gear, it will, um, you know, as you, I can hear the engine turning as I rotate the wheels. So it's rotating via the wheels. That's how you can do things like, for example, uh, wind generation in game, because the wheel the wheel will move that along. All right, so that's back in. Let's put this back in. All right, good. So those are away. Let's go ahead and grab Katie. All right, so here's the most recent version of the did. So this is better. This has uh, this is up to date. I was on the wrong one. So uh, mass power there. All right, good. So that is up. And we'll put the other rescue. Close the door. That's much better. Much, much better. I was looking at it, I was like, well, this doesn't make any sense. So. All right, we're going to turn strobes now, beacon on, and we'll head out to the uh, to our private island. Try to get moving with, uh, with Triton. All right, so let's get up there. Let's go ahead and we'll set in some autopilot stuff here. So uh, don't need the heading hold right now. Altitude, we'll just do 250 feet. That's in. Altitude holds coming on. Let's find this island here. I should put a, uh, a radio beacon on this at some point. Let's go ahead and enter that in. All right, and let's go ahead and we'll go start increasing. And this is heading bearing. And I'm starting to push the propeller forward, and we'll get going. So I, when they worked on that glitch that was causing the the drag glitch, I think they did it. I, they said there was some aerodynamic glitch they fixed recently. Uh, things are going much faster now. I think Katie used to do a little bit slower than this. It's now faster. So you can already see the island at 12 o'clock, so pretty quick flight out there to the island. That's my functions for any sort of, for some, for example, I have a Bambi bucket I can put underneath that uh, is for fighting fires. So I like to put a, probably, I think right here on the left side of the island, I like to put a helipad up there. So that, uh, I, I think I did it in one of the live streams. I have to put it back on, so. But it'll essentially, it'll be the same uh, helipad that we have on Triton. It won't be the same one it has on Triton. It has the same attachment type of system. And, uh, you know, you can attach Katie did or uh, some, some of my other vehicles on there. The Hummingbird. Uh, Night Owl is going to be too big to operate on uh, Triton. All right, good. So we are almost there. So Triton launches in this tunnel. Did a couple things in some live streams trying to get Triton all set up for utilizing the career build series, for example. I've uh, worked on the electricity make sure that's all connected. I also, the mast needs to start in the down position because if it goes in this cave, the mast will hit the roof, and we do not want that. All right, so let's go ahead and land Katie on the island. I took the, so when I when I select AP on that uh, autopilot, autopilot master, that's what turns on the auto hover on the gyro, and so that essentially it tries to make all your stuff zero out. So that it keeps it stable. That's how, like, a lot of games will simulate aircraft. You know, this is a more hands-on thing. Like, I have to actually do that myself. And so it's, uh, you know, a little bit more engaging. And if I don't want to, I can just turn that on, and it will kind of smooth things out for me. It always tries to level me out. Makes it a little bit easier. But I like to do it myself. All right, so let's go ahead, and we will turn on ground idle. You find where the parking brake is. Parking brake release. Okay, brakes on. Good. And so we can shut off. All right, we'll open my door. And mass power will come off. All right, good. So Katie is on the island. Nice. All right, so let's leave Katie up top, and we're going to go ahead and down. You know, it would be really cool if there was another uh, way to spawn, say, you know, like some helicopters and stuff up on top there. It just makes it kind of a pain, but you know, it's not the end of the world. All right, so these are the these are the static vehicle workbenches. 
and the structure workbenches. So as you can see, we can build in the middle here. And we also have one that's right here that allows us to build on top. So that's pretty cool. And then if we go into the cave here, we also have the ability to build inside the cave. So that was that hole you could see. And then we also have the ability to build in here. So for example, you could turn this into like a sub pen or you could put a, uh, a dock or something. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna launch Triton. So let's see, that was today's that I worked on. So beautiful. All right, so this should be good to go. Again, 489,000 to spawn Triton. And it uh, holds a buttload of fuel. So, uh, you know, I think like 172,000. We don't have that much fuel. If you remember from the other episode, we uh, went ahead and brought, uh, I think it was 108,000 liters of diesel on board. This can also hold jet fuel. That's, I, can it? I can't remember if it can. I don't think this does. It holds jet fuel for the def system, but it, it uh, can... It can also bring, uh, you can also utilize the diesel from its tanks to fill other vehicles. So, for example, we can refuel KD. All right, so we're going to go down into the uh, engineering section here. And we'll start by walking over here, and we will uh, flip the main breaker. All right, so with the main breaker on, that is allowing power to be supplied to the, to the craft. We're going to go ahead up into the engineering room here, up into the control room. Uh, starboard battery bank comes on, port battery bank comes on, starboard main gen, port main gen, uh, starboard harbor generator, and port harbor generator. So you look back there, we have the starboard and the port harbor generators. Those will automatically come on whenever we need the electricity. So whenever the batteries go down a little bit, and this is just the, the master of power for the system. All right, and we're good to go up. So, good practice, close all my doors. In case we spring a leak, we don't want it going everywhere and sinking us. We just want to have a little bit of a floodage, not major floodage. All right, so we'll get up into the bridge. Still have a couple decks left to go. This is the rec room. And here we are on the bridge. Okay, good. So, helm systems are coming on. Port and starboard diesels are starting. We're going to leave the mast down for now. As you can see, the ballasts are starting to pull water in to uh, be all set up for that. We'll start to go forward. All right, and we're pulling out of the cave here. So I really like the cave. The cave's a lot of fun. All right, so... Here, we're coming out, and we don't need to go very far. I just want to get that uh, helipad clear, and that way uh, we can land Katie on. Still need to work on the smoke a little bit. I'm trying to reduce it. I don't want it completely gone. It's nice to have a little bit. And we'll get uh, go back and get Katie. So go ahead and uh, go all stop. I'm going to go ahead and put on my nav lights. Nav lights are on. I'm just going to no clip up there, you know, again. Does it give me any value? I have no clip shut off, so what we'll do is we'll just um, enable it. Does it give me really any value to crawl over there? Of course not. One of the things I do with no clipping and teleporting is it's kind of like I'm changing character. For example, there wouldn't be one dude running the ship and this helicopter and all this IRL. You'd have a lot of people, so it's like I'm changing character from, you know, the captain of the ship to the pilot of Katie did. So a little bit of RP on that note. And so when we get a, a flight RPS light on, that means we're good to go. It means we have enough RPS that the rotor has enough power, essentially, for flight. So there it goes. Green light. Green means go. I also want to shut off those. Those I don't need anymore. So that's just, uh, like I said, turn on AP Master. It's going to give me that uh, auto hover feature so that, you know, if I let go, I just let go of the controls. You notice it tries to stop my forward motion. It tries to level me out. That's all the auto hover is doing is it's kind of a smoother. All right, we have to be careful. Katie did does not have a ton of extra space on the helipad, so we can hit the front propeller on the uh, on this cage up here on the uh, railings. So this is my camera here for right underneath me. So I'm just going to come in and we start transitioning to that camera. If I want to, what I can do is I can match the heading. So, for example, our heading right now is where are we at uh, 004. So we can put that in 004. All right, so that's in there, and we'll do heading hold, and that will just hold us, and now we don't have to worry about heading anymore, so that's convenient. 
So that's something I can do to reduce workload. You know, the whole point of an autopilot is not to actually fly for you. It's uh, workload reduction. It allows you to do more. So when we get over the pad, you'll notice it's kind of flashing some lights there. And we get a checker, we get a uh, bullseye come up. And the uh, you can see the railings to my peripherals are, are going down, as you can see. So we don't hit uh, tail rotors or whatnot. And that's all controlled by if I go over a distance sensor in the center. Oh. And we attach the wrong one. If we look, we're on the left side. So we don't want to be attached to that one. So what we'll do is we'll do uh, detach coupling. And I want to make sure I go back so I don't accidentally hit it. And we'll just, uh, that resets itself. So I didn't need to click it again. But. So I'll make sure I align. I want to get that bullseye in the center. I'm just trying not to hit the propeller on the uh, the front propeller on the uh the railings. Alright, and we're close, so it'll snap in a second here. We're very close. Oh, I just hit the propeller. The exact thing I said I would not do, so. I do not want to do. I didn't say I wouldn't do it. I make no promises here. Oh, jeez. What's going on here, man? I don't know why it's not grabbing. Maybe the coupling. Maybe I screwed up the coupling here. So, we just lost the front propeller. It's fine. We can still fly. It's just, um, I have to repair it now. I don't know why this isn't grabbing now. So, it could be that, um, you know, I didn't do the coupling button right, and now it doesn't want to couple. So, we'll have to see. It might have a reset timer. I can't remember how I set it up. So, it, we're a little bit off. I'm just going to go third person. I want to see where it is and make sure it's working correctly. So those are free floating, the couplers inside of the helipad. And so they will just come up on their own to grab. So they're within range. They just um, are presently, see, you can see them getting pulled up. So they are getting pulled up by, there we go. And they grab, so it's good. All right, so we're grabbed. As you can see, that's why the those uh, gates go down. And then when it grabs, the uh, gates will come back up. Yeah, pretty simple. You could just hear a harbor generator start. So we'll shut the engine off, shut the master power off, open our door. I think that I need the master power to open that door with that button. There we go. And then that can go off. There we go. All right, so I need to repair Katie's propeller. That's fine. That's not a big deal. I think I actually have a repair torch in here. Let's see. Doth thou have a repair torch? Excuse me. Excuse me. Trying to get in here. All right. Ah, uh, yes. Okay, good. So we'll grab that. I've got too much crap on me at the moment. I like a uh, like a hoarder. I take everything out of all these um, missions. All right, there we go. So that's back uh, where it needs to be. All right, and so Katie has been repaired. All right, good. So Katie's on board. Let's go ahead and let's get out of here. So we'll go ahead and we will head over to the Cake of Spies. And um, I don't know if we have any containers there, but we're going to go and check. So not a big deal. We have plenty of fuel that we can pretty much go anywhere. So we're good to go. And we're uh, consistently making it because of the uh, oil update. So right over there, visual, beautiful. We're going to start moving. All right, so the two uh, engines are synced to one another. All right, so we're going to go ahead on our map here. We'll zoom out. And we're right over here is where we want to go. So we're just going to line it up. Now we'll add the waypoint and turn the autopilot on. And so that's going to just uh, move us over there. And we're good to go. So not shouldn't take us too long to get there. Yep, uh, some I didn't put the mast up. We should put the mast up. So there goes the mast. As you can see, the mast is raising. So that's uh, you know that allows us to get under bridges. Looks like I didn't fix the lighting on there. The uh, the lights uh, are supposed to be on, and it looks like I forgot to do that in the live stream. So I have to do that. We'll put that on my to-do list that the lighting for that is still needs to be done. All 
All right, so I will see you guys when we get there. It should be a pretty quick trip. So here we are, we're arriving at SPAC Hex. We just got to merge, so we're not going to do that. Let's go ahead and we'll uh, take off the autopilot and I'll start steering myself. So we need to get ready to dock here. The weather has turned, as you can imagine. It is known to do in storm marks. And uh, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to get ready for docking here. So I like to have, uh, you know, splittable thrust. So we're going to go desync the thrust port, so now I can independently control port starboard. So we'll go ahead and we will get Triton into the dock, and then I think we'll rub off and we'll call an episode, and then uh, next episode, looking to load Triton up with as many containers as we can get. Uh, the nice thing with this is it has you know, a very extensive range, and so we can go ahead and head pretty much anywhere we want. And so, for example, we could go out, uh, we could grab a couple for Komodo, we could grab a couple for Sora North, Sora South, wherever we want to go. Load Triton up, I'd like to put all five containers on. Part of the point of Triton being a home ship is, go ahead and put uh, Triton on autopilot. I, it can do, I think, at least 30 waypoints, I think. I can't remember exactly how many are in there. I could always add more. And so you can put the waypoints in there and go ahead and let this run. We can get in Katie did and, for example, go do that mission. So that's kind of the point is we have the ability to use the Parasite Craft to go do missions and uh, leave, uh, leave Triton on autopilot. So let's go ahead and we'll go back in first person. I like to dock for first person. So this should be a pretty easy dock in here. We're going to go ahead and we'll start slowing down. So I'm leaving port up a little bit, and we're actually going to bring starboard all the way down. And that's going to help push us diagonally towards the dock. So as you can see, I have port, the port screw is still going. Starboard screw is uh, it's zeroed. And so I'm moving the rudder back over. I'm going to center the rudder. That will help to push us over to the dock. And as you can see, this is helping us to slide right, and it is also causing us to go forward. And so I'm actually going to go radar, camera. We're going to go cam 2, and that's going to give us a little bit better view. That camera's on the starboard side. So go ahead and zero the thrust out. We're going to go ahead and we'll go uh, stern thruster just a little bit, bow thruster just a little bit. 
And we'll go ahead and we'll thrust over. And as you can see, pretty good docking job, uh, you know, without using the thrusters. And now we're thrusting in. As is my way, I tend to shut off vehicle damage at dock. Uh, it's just a game limitation. You know, the vehicle will bang up against the dock. And eventually it will put a hole in the ship. So that's not realistic. So I, uh, I use the, the custom menu to try to be a little bit more realistic. As you can see, that... Uh, that bow thruster there is spinning right there, and it is pushing us into the dock. So just gently wait for it to push us in. The stern thruster is also going, as you can see there, and that's just keeping us pinned up against the dock as we wait for the bow. I can use this uh, fire cannon, uh, theoretically, if I don't press the wrong buttons, to kind of look a little bit and see. I can't look down. I'll, I'm going to put more cameras on eventually. But we're just waiting for the bow. As you can see, it's gently coming over. I could push it faster, but... We're not in any rush. All right, so we're up against the dock now, so we're going to go ahead and we will zero these out. All right, perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and we'll jump on the dock. Getting a little bit of a slowdown. Triton is a uh, it's kind of a resource beast, and so it um, will slow things down. So I want to get a rope here. I have to go down a level to get a rope, but uh, I'm just going to be naughty and jump over uh, if I can. There we go. All right, we're gonna go ahead and grab a rope. Do I have one here? I don't. I have one on this side. All right, good. So we have a rope, and we're gonna go ahead and we'll jump over. A little bit of slowdown, like I said. You know, it's uh, quite a physics hog, Triton. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, if you keep it on 40, it will do the auto extension like it used to do before the update. All right, and so that we're roped off on the on the bow, and let's go get a rope for stern. Up, oh, come on, don't fall off there, you ding dong. There we go. Go get a stern rope, and we will hook that up, and then we'll be good to go. And we have one on the port side. I've got them on the port side, so go up here on the helipad. We'll try to jump across from the heliopad. All right, beautiful. All right, so I knocked over the life ring. We'll, I think we'll live. All right, good. So we are now docked. And so uh, next episode, we're going to go ahead and we will load up some containers. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next episode.